Yeah, welcome to another edition of Starting and Managing Your Business Amid COVID. I think this is part five. And I want to thank good pastor for, actually you pastor for this opportunity to be a blessing to brethren. I believe this program or this seminar, this weekly program has been a blessing to you. Uh, we appreciate your feedback. We appreciate your question. You can see the question just below for clarification, DLSO for DLS at gmail.com. And um, we appreciate your feedback on what can be improved upon and your expectation and how it's been a blessing to you so as to be able to improve on this. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We glorify your name for your grace upon our life. We thank you, dear Father, for all we are learning. Help us today that will be doers of this word and not hear us only in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we are discussing principles. Principles. Principles are universal and experience is peculiar. Principles are universal and experience is peculiar. This is a very, very important aspect of this program. And the reason is because I don't have an idea of what some of us will be doing. And because we don't have an idea of what you'll be doing, the implication of that is we can only work on principles or talk about principles that can be applied across board, irrespective of what you will be doing as a business, irrespective of what you will be doing as a business. And the principle I'll be talking about today and in the next three or four episodes are scripture-based. They are scripture based, and that's very important because every human idea have a lifespan. Every human idea have a lifespan. Every human idea will expire sooner or later. It is only, it is only the truth that remains. And that's the difference between truth and fact. The major difference between truth and fact is the fact that truth is constant, fact changes. There are some things you were taught in science when you were in secondary school that are no more correct today about the understanding of the earth at those times. In, in those times, it was true then, but it was not the truth. And now today we are getting to know another fact which might not be the truth. I might change in future as human beings advance. Like I said, this scripture, this principle of scripture, based on the way not in the scripture, I probably quote them along the line. But the reason why it's so important is I'm hoping that what, this will make us to change our perspective about the way we read the Bible, knowing fully well that God has given, making this principle available for us for a reason. To be able to help us navigate through the challenges of life. Challenges in business, challenges in everything. It helps us navigate through it easily. If we are not able to put principle into practice, most of our activity will be guesswork. Because that means we are not sure. You know, when you put principles into practice, it makes life predictable. For example, the principle of gravity. If I throw a stone up, it's predictable that it will come down. Why? Because of the consistency is the result of the truth, which is the principle. Because of the consistency in the result, which is the truth. As a matter of fact, look at this chart. This chart is from a country, US, that have data, that have support structure for businesses, that have infrastructure, and 75% of the business are still unable to survive after 10 years. This is exactly the reason why we need to live and work based on principle. This is exactly the reason why we need to live and work based on principle. This is exactly the reason why. Why? If we do not put principle into practice, if we do not put principle into practice, it leaves us with guesswork. 
and that increased our error rate. That increased our error rate. And that's why you have this kind of very, very bad statistics of the mortality rate of businesses. Mortality rate of businesses. 25% surviving after 10 years. If this is happening in a country that have statistics, that infrastructure, that have support, like US, what will you say about Nigeria? And we've been on for 10 years in what I do. I left banking 2010 and started exactly August 1. So we'll be 10 years in August 1. And we'll put this principle into practice. So that's why I, every time I have opportunity to speak on entrepreneurship, I always emphasize principle. And it's not just for entrepreneurship, it's for life also, for our life and living. For life and living. 20% down in 10 in in one year in five years 60 percent gone and in 10 years 75 percent this mortality rate will have been significantly reduced if people put into practice principles 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 like i said principle universal experience is peculiar that's why I spend a lot of time talking about principle, even though I share experience occasionally, but principle is really much more important. The first principle we are looking at today is called the law of gestation. It said, every good thing or idea you work at takes time to materialize. Every good thing or idea you work at takes time to materialize. So avoid the temptation of hasty result. There's a temptation of hasty result. Avoid it. Avoid it. Avoid it. So if you start a venture, for it to become big, great, to become a no name, to be the kind of business you really want to associate with, it takes time. You know, because we are Christian and we believe in the Bible and we know sometimes devil do cause some issues, sometimes we attribute some of the things we face in business to the devil. And if that's the only thing you think of, you might be wrong. Sometimes it might not necessarily be the devil. It might be that you are still going through the gestation period, especially when you are just starting. And people are already patronizing, only that they are not, is not growing at the rate you want. Maybe there is something you're not even doing right or doing correctly that you need to correct or do something about that you're not even aware of. And you need to understand that we're in a fast paced world. And you don't know how much some of the instant milk, instant noodles, instant food is doing to our psyche. You know, I, I have some products in the office that whenever I travel, I buy some of these products to be able to show people about what Nigeria can also produce and ship out. And there was a time I was making those kind of shopping in, in Peckham in UK and, <laughs> and I bought a jollof rice and fried rice that were instant jollof rice, instant fried rice. All you need to do is put in microwave and it's done in a short time. Instant jollof rice, instant fried rice. Instant food. So everything is quick, quick, sharp, sharp, quick, quick, sharp, sharp. That's why even young people also want to make it big once. People are not thinking. Many people are not thinking. Of the law of gestation. Imagine a man that have a wife. Will you say because your wife is the month five, 
and or, it, or you just finished the second trimester and you you feel ah it's six months already now so why is this baby not coming out you know why we don't think like that we think it's normal for the baby to spend nine months in the womb that's exactly the way it's normal for businesses to take a while to pick up to bring for the desired goal So you need to keep working at it. Because with this mindset, you keep working at it. You don't attribute your the issue to any. You just keep working at it, working at it. What because you know you are going through a law of gestation. We'll see other law later on that also speak to this gestation period. So at such time, you just keep working at it. Just keep working at it. Don't stop. Don't get discouraged. As long as you are making progress, you can see that you're not where you are today, like yesterday. So that means you have moved away from where you were yesterday. So yeah, as long as you're making progress, you're good. Every good thing and idea you work up takes time to materialize. Please, I beg you, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Keep learning and growing. Don't be in a hurry. Keep doing all your marketing activity. Don't be in a hurry. Be thou follower of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. That's where I got this principle from. Be thou follower of them who through faith and patience. Who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So it takes time. It takes time. It takes time. You know, someone said, if you want to reap corn, you sow the seed of corn in three months, you're okay. And for you to, when you harvest, for you to get another corn, you need to go and sow it. But if you sow the seed of cocoa, it might take you some years, two, three years. But after that, you won't have to go and plant again. One is taking three months, one is taking three years. The gestation of what you are doing depends likely also on the results you want and the type of business and the type of business. If you are the business require getting big client that one transaction will give you some very reasonable money, it might take a while for you to get them. But if it's just a business that uh, everybody can, are your customer, everybody's your customer and they can come and buy, of course, within a short time, you begin to see people come in, but they're not paying so much. The law of gestation. The next one is the law of mental labor. The more you sweat in your brain, the more you earn. The more you sweat in your muzu, the less you earn. The more you sweat in your brain, the more you earn. The more you sweat in your muzu, the less you earn. Everybody have brain, everybody have muzu, but not everybody have teeth. Develop brain. So develop mind is scarce. Develop mind is scarce. Because develop mind is scarce, it's also difficult. Sorry, it's also uh, um, um, expensive to acquire such mind to pay a salary because it's rare. So you pay more because not everybody develop their mind. Any business you want to do, any product you want to sell, any service you want to sell, if you do not have enough mental labor going into it, you are setting up yourself for serious competition. What will make it difficult for people to copy? 
is the sustainable competitive advantage over competition. Sustainable competitive advantage over competition, which often come through the use of your mind, through the use of your brain. Sustainable competitive advantage over competition. Sustainable competitive advantage over competition. Imagine a factory of pure water. You have people carrying the load of pure water in and out of the factory on their head under the sun called using muscular energy. You have another set of people using machine to produce under the in the in the factory itself, and they're producing using machine, and that's the mechanical energy. There's a third set who is under AC in the same organization, producing. They are using mental energy. Who sweat the most? Muscular. Who earn the most? Mental. The more you sweat in your brain, <laughs> the more you earn. The more you sweat in your muscle, the less you earn. Brain is not in abundance because it takes a lot of time to develop it. So it's not readily available. And because it's not readily available, people are willing to pay more for a lot of brain tasks. Now, if you want to do any product, for example, you want to do granite cake, Kuli Kuli. You know you can't do Kuli Kuli the way it's been done normally. If you are going to really go places and attract the right people, you need to have a recipe for that granite from the granite itself, the quantity, and the quantity of each ingredient. Maybe you're putting pepper, you're putting ginger, you're putting sugar, you're putting honey, whatever it is you're putting in that granite to mix it together, to be able to arrive at a taste that is so unique, and that becomes your intellectual property, your trade secret, and no one have access to it. So it makes you stand out. People can only guess, they don't get it. Just like Coca-Cola has been able to also keep it safe, trade secret, the formula. You are going to earn more because of that mental labor. You're going to earn more because of that mental labor. Mental labor. Mental labor. People are willing to pay more. Why? You're rare. You're not common. So you must put a lot of time into developing your mind and let that show up in your business, in what you do. Let it show up, let it be seen. And that, that's what defines your difference. That's what defines your difference. The law of mental labor. The law of promotion. The law of promotion. The more consistent you are in diligently doing the right thing, the higher your chance of promotion. The higher your chance of promotion. The more consistent you are in diligently, and that's the word, diligent, just the way we have mental labor, mental labor, knowledge. You remember for mental labor, you remember the scripture talk about the fact that a foolish man, I mean, the labor of a foolish man wearied every one of them because he doesn't know how to market. He doesn't know how to get the attention of the market. He doesn't know his target market. He doesn't know knowledge, how to go to the city. The labor of a foolish man wearied every one of them. He doesn't know how to go to the city. He doesn't know how to go to the city. And see that a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. Now, the force of diligence, the force of diligence is so strong. The force of diligence is so strong. When it produces any result, 
Kings cannot ignore it. People that matter in the society cannot ignore it. Kings cannot ignore it. People that matter cannot ignore it. Why? Because it's so unique, it's so different, it's so outstanding, it's standing out of the crowd. It's distinct. The result is so pronounced. You must have learned mental labor, the right thing. You must have learned to do the right thing. You must have learned to do the right thing. You must have had a business model. You must have had a business model canvas. You must have had a business plan. You must have written them down. You must have known about marketing. You must have known about sales. You written them down, doing the right thing. You must be diligently doing the right thing. If you're diligent, you cannot be ignored. <clears throat> you will outrun your competitor. Before they know what you have done, you have gone ahead, you've done another thing. There's always something new coming up. Something new coming up. Something new coming up. Why? Because of the force of diligence. The force of diligence. He said the hand of diligence be a rule. You rule in your sector. You rule in your sector. Especially when you've been able to attain the 10,000 hour rule. That is what makes you approve. He says study to show thyself approve. Unto God. And if you approve unto God, you can be sure you approve unto me. Study. With the 10,000 hour rule, you have spent 10,000 hour learning, de de developing yourself in that field, you don't have a choice. They don't have a choice, they must notice you. Because you have already achieved, you become an expert in that field already. You are among the top in that field already. Because very few have been able to attain that. Everybody that is able to do that become among the 1%. In that industry, among the one percent in that industry, because of the time they spend learning, and they cannot be ignored. The day this done on me was the day I found myself on the panel of a bankers retreat of CBN, where all the bank MDs are seated, and these are the people who are predominantly my client in terms of banks and the people we. We market most of the time and try to get the attention of their directors. And here am I right in front of all the MDs of Nigerian Bank. And of course, it becomes easier to be able to get to meet some of them and have a relationship with them. Now, what am I trying to say? Being on that panel took me eight years. It was in 2018, eight years. Eight years. But the force of diligence make it possible that as they were looking around the country to look for people to come and speak to them, the force of diligence could not be ignored. The force of diligence could not be ignored. The force of diligence could not be ignored. You cannot afford to be lazy. You know, some people are lazy on their job. And they think they'll become diligent when they start their own business. It's a lie. Whatever you are doing today is sowing a seed. You will repeat in your business tomorrow. That's why I often say that you should see Jesus as the one giving you that job. He literally signed your employment letter. So you do it as unto the Lord. I see Jesus gives signed employment letter and you give your best. Because when you give your best, you become the best. You can't afford to be lazy. He said, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little food, no time to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as the one that traveled and thy want as armed man. <laughs> thy want as armed man. Thy want as armed man. What? Fully kitted, fully armed. Thy want. Why? Because of laziness. Because of laziness. Because of laziness. Because of laziness. See why that man. 
diligent in the prison. He shall stand before king. He shall not stand before mean men. It's very important that we see, we don't see our business or our job as being secular. Because some people see it as being secular. That's why they, they don't give their best to it. When you see it as being spiritual, as God being the one giving you that job, as you manifesting his glory and kingdom on that job, as you fulfilling your purpose and calling on that job, you know what? You give your best. You give your best. Because when you give your best, you become the best. You cannot do without diligence. It's a force to be reckoned with any day, anytime. Any day, anytime. And anybody that relegate to the background is doing that some peril or the peril of the task he has. So you can't joke with the force of diligence. You can't joke with the force of diligence. Diligence is something all of us must emulate. All of us must imbibe, especially in your own business. So you can't afford to be lazy, laid back. You can't afford to disappoint your customers. You can't afford it because they pay the bill. You must be so diligent that when you say you will do it in a week, you actually know you can do it in four days. But you say a week to give room for unforeseen circumstances. So you over deliver another promise. Rather than over promising and under deliver, you are over deliver. You deliver ahead of time. So they can trust your word. 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 They love promotion. The more consistent you are in diligently doing the right thing, the higher your chance of promotion in life. You will see that. I don't know if you've seen some of these scriptures in this life before. These are code in scriptures that God has put there for us to use, but sometimes we spiritualize it. We don't see them as the way we should live, as in a, 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 a building block of the way we should live our life. Remember the Bible says that it is the glory of God to hide the matter. It is the honor of king to find it out, to search it out. And he said, the secret of life is with them that fear him. It's with them that fear him. It's with them, but they're not looking at it. You know why? Because we spiritualize it, forgetting that he said, if you can do what is inside, you will make your way prosperous. You will have good success. If you do those laws, if you do those principles, and that's why we are studying this today. I believe this has been a blessing to you today. Thank you very much for listening again. I want to thank the National Youth Pastor also for the privilege of helping me, give me the opportunity rather to be a blessing to you also. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We glorify your name for what we've meant. We pray you give us the grace to put this into practice and to begin to see the result in our life so our Christianity become more and more practical, increasing our resolve and conviction to serve you for the rest of our life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for having us at our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. See you next week.